the built environment is one of the key players in climate change. Buildings are responsible for 40% of carbon emissions globally. Um, and so we have to change. This is not a question. The question is how do we change and how quickly can we change? That, that really is the question. I'm really into trees and to save this um, beautiful 100-year-old oak, this chestnut, eight-inch wide chestnut boards that are 12 feet long with gorgeous green. I mean, it's something you can't even get anymore. Beautiful fur. The structural lumber that was in these houses is, uh, you know, I think invaluable in a sense. If we tear down a building in one, two days, just putting it all in a dumpster and carrying it to the landfill, that is cheaper in terms of how many labor hours you put in and what kind of equipment you need, but we carry societal costs that result in climate change at the end. What we do in the Circular Construction Lab is really trying to investigate how we can close the material loop and the economic loop um, in construction. So what we do is we look at two different directions. We look at the past and everything that has been built already and trying to understand to what extent we can reactivate the materials that these buildings were built out of for future construction. So understanding the built environment as an urban mine um, to be harvested for continuous use. More than 50 volunteers showed up in bitter cold winter weather to haul flooring with nails in it out of houses in icy conditions. But we, we moved mountains with all those people. It was really fabulous. A circular economy is a, is a very, very local economy. So reuse means that you, you shouldn't ship materials to China or India or Africa afterwards, but you reuse them locally, only then it makes sense, which reduces transport costs, which reduces the emissions that come from the production of new materials because you don't need those anymore, you substitute those. Um, and you create a ton of local jobs, green jobs, a new type of workforce um, in the process which benefits the community. The Green New Deal and the, the need for more workforce, I think the activity of reuse is being recognized as a potential arena for workforce engagement, not just workforce development, but a way to kind of get people who might not be engaged in the workforce to say, hey, that's something I could do or I could try that might be a stepping stone into a career in the trades. So the Circular Construction Lab, is, as part of this project, is really interested in, in following the narrative of these materials. So where do they come from and especially where do they go? Um, we, we'd be really happy to see that the, the timber that we're pulling out of this house right now, for example, ends up in Project X and we get to document that as well um, to, to really follow these materials and the narrative to the end of that second life. There's these older buildings that, are, that have a ton of value in terms of being able to disassemble them and then there's going to be this era where it's going to be really challenging and then hopefully the next era that Felix is helping take the lead on is going to be things that are designed to be taken apart in panels and reused. Um, so that's really exciting because it's the direction we have to go in. Of course these materials that are being saved have have other values as well, other than the embodied carbon that is in it or the embodied water, but there is embodied skills, there's embodied history in these. And so preserving some of that is part of the goal of this project. The human impact is the most profound and the most valuable. There's so much opportunity here. It's just a matter of building up the right infrastructure to do it.